happy with the mini excavator. The most you can do it is five feet down and you have to actually have to dig almost directly under you. Hello everyone, welcome to our trenching project. Today we are digging a well pipe to our house located about 320 feet away. This task is particularly challenging due to the rocky mountain soil filled with large boulders. Since our mini excavator is new, we're testing its capacity by moving stone boulders. Thankfully, everything went smoothly and we can move on to do the bigger task. As we began the actual trench, we quickly encountered huge boulders, making our progress slow. Here, we could barely lift up this one. And when we had it over, well, guess what? Just went backwards. But finally, we made it. I got this big boulder that if I had to actually do it by hand with a big hammer and a shovel, I would never be able to remove it. I changed the bucket with a little one to dig around it and uh, finally I was able to take it out of the hole. The thing is, uh, I could not lift it up. I didn't even try it. I just uh, pull it slowly, slowly, and uh, it's okay. I was scared that it can be bigger because, unfortunately, at our elevation, you can have a surprise to find a rock like that uh, probably four or five times bigger. And uh, if it was one around the casing of the well, then uh, I don't know what I will do. You know, what's the worst? case scenario so now I'm ready to dig for the next couple of hours. Here you can see the distance we have to dig from the house to the well. Huge. How is going? Uh, it's hard but it's doable. You change the bucket you put a larger one. And this is not losing any any oil but it's getting hot really hot maybe you yeah, should let it cool off a little hot, hot. oh it's hot it's very hot 180 yeah it's very hot i have to let it cool off release. a little yeah. and too much. you think you can do the whole thing with it i can try at this point we are paying close attention for leaks because we just had to fix the swing gear for the final drive that was losing hydraulic oil. Now Michael opened the bottom of the trench near the well casing, preparing to pierce it for the pitless adapter installation later. In between, Michael had to do repeated changes of the attachments to make his job easier Another snag in our progress. We are in a big predicament. We hit a stone, which is super big. We have another one somewhere where the trench is going crooked, but that's at least four and a half feet deep. This one it's barely two feet deep. We're going to have to try to take it out somehow. This is super hard.
by nightfall, the massive boulder was removed and Michael had dug 40 feet of the trench. That is the boulder. Holy mackerel. It is huge. I can't believe that with the little one, <laughs> my husband took out this big rock. It's half of his cabin. That is the 100 foot mark of what he has to dig. Maybe tomorrow we reached it. For day two, our goal is to reach the first 100 feet. So I'm happy with the mini excavator. After we finish and uh, fix the hydraulic leak that we had prior, so actually it's doing a good job. Unfortunately, it's too sm too small for this big job because we have to dig down to six feet to be safe with the water line from the well. We cannot do it. The most you can do it, it's five feet down and you have to actually have to dig almost directly under you. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna dig all the way up to the house and then we're gonna rent a bigger excavator and I'm gonna go again and uh, dig another another foot and a half to two feet of, uh, uh, of dirt. He found another big boulder right there and we decided that we're just going to scoop what we can and then come up with a bigger excavator that we're going to rent for a few hours only instead of renting it for a few weeks. I guess he has one more boulder right there. So. Uh Outside is raining. I take a break because I'm really tired. I sit in the cabin inside in a mini excavator for probably like five, six hours and my back hurts. And unfortunately, that's a long story connected with uh, serving the military. And uh, uh, now I'm going to go and eat. Uh, it's nice to have a cabin without uh, probably you will have to get a rain jacket or something. So. The cabin is good in the summer is not really great because it's getting too hot inside but uh, now outside it's a little bit uh, chilly and it's perfect inside and a uh, couple of hours i'm gonna restart uh, working probably in an hour and a half i'm gonna take a break and eat and uh, we keep going towards the house and then we're gonna have to rent a bigger excavator that can go deeper so hopefully i can reach that uh, six feet that i wanted normally should be under four and a half but uh, we want deeper if not then we will have to insulate the the pipe uh, because we will have a problem but it's better to actually pay extra and get a, a bigger excavator to dig deeper in that way uh, you will don't need any insulation Thinking about the plan, uh, thinking about uh, the water, the well, and how long it will take me to actually finish the job. I just heard my husband saying, oh, and I know why now. The track came off. Well, luckily we know how to put it back, but he doesn't have time to waste. At least you know what to do. Huh? At least you know what to do. Oh, yeah. Do you need my help? No. You are a mechanic? No. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. 
By day three, we covered nearly 200 feet, but hit the snug. The tracks of the excavator kept coming off to the rocks getting lodged inside. Not even half hour into his work, we got another problem on the other side. The truck came up too. Good to go? Yeah, it's ready to go. You can work with a machine many days and nothing happened and then in one day all you do is uh, greasing, putting gas and then changing, changing fixing the tracks. Twice. At the end of day three, Michael is working right next to the house, making a good progress. On the fourth day, he begins digging from underneath the house to connect it with the rest of the trench. We needed some help and we got it. It is Friday, day 5, and we brought in a larger excavator to dig deeper and handle the bigger boulders. This machine drives right on top of the trench to maximize efficiency. It was a good idea and it was not to pre-dig with the smaller excavator. It was good because we didn't have to keep longer this bigger excavator, but we already had the edges on the trench and they could easily be going down under this big excavator's weight. Michael uncovered bigger and larger boulders than before. Day 6 Hey, where is my husband? My husband is right here. He's finally next to the house. It was a struggle. The trench is nearly completed and at the depth between 5 to 7 feet. The storm is coming. That's not good for us. It was very hard and my husband had to improvise with how he would use the excavator too. My husband is in a canyon. After digging the trench, now we have to level the trench, ensuring the pipe won't be damaged by sharp boulders during installation. Like, don't do this at home. You're like in a canyon. Very dangerous. Yeah. This is the pipe we are using. It is a SDR7, 200 psi, one and a quarter inch Sencor pipe. We could have used one inch pipe, 
but this larger diameter can provide nearly 77% more water flow compared to a 1 inch pipe. Our well is at 320 feet away from our house. We're leaving the pipe overnight to see if it's getting straighter and tomorrow is gonna be the D-Day when we're gonna fight with the pipe to go in the trench Well, waiting for the pipe to straighten up, of course, we had to do something else. And now my husband is working on insulating the roof. I'm helping Michael to position carefully the pipe in the trench. Okay, we made it. All of it is in. 300 feet only. You need a hand? No. I need a hand when I bring in the the water pipe. Michael is paying attention to all the little details. Right now, He's ensuring that the pipe is entrenched without being crooked or pierced by rocks. He's ensuring a flat bottom underneath to make sure that the pipe is not getting snagged or kinked. Next, he's covering with a layer of dirt without the rocks to keep the pipe protected and right now he's placing snow melting wires on top of that dirt. We took the water pipe and uh, we put it inside in a trench and uh, I covered it with uh, maybe two, three inches of dirt. And now I have uh, this wire, it's a heating wire. Normally it's used for uh, melting the snow on the roof. So it's staying in the water and I want what I want to do, I want to put a, above the water pipe and in case that in the winter it's minus 50, minus 60, I'm going to plug this during the night to hit the ground around the pipe. So it's not connecting with the pipe, it's just above the pipe and uh, hopefully I will never need to use it because the, the, the ditch is down to at least five, uh, five feet, normally it's six seven some places even eight and uh, what i gonna do i gonna plug this when uh, like i said when it's extremely cold to not get any trouble with the water pipe and above the uh, this uh, wire i gonna put another maybe um, maybe a foot to two feet of uh, dirt and then i gonna lay the electric wire for the pump and above that i gonna put another maybe uh, six inches or one foot of uh, dirt and above I'm gonna put a warning uh, tape I have a metallic tape and that way they, if anybody is gonna have to actually dig or me I have to dig I will know that as soon as I hit the tape I have another feet of uh, dirt and I will be more cautious digging again for the pipe or whatever I have to do here so uh, I hope in uh, like three days I'm gonna be done with this but uh, in the meantime, I have to go and purchase a uh, uh, couple of things to connect uh, the hydrant and uh, the pipes together. We had to go in a far away larger city to get the conduit for the wire that is now 
been already in place. So what we are doing right now, we are installing the conduit for the power line to the casing of the well and uh, I'm gluing it and uh, put a thread inside uh, to pull the wire and uh, I hope that uh, till the end of the day we're gonna be able to actually start covering the trench. We have to decide which kind of uh, pump we're gonna put inside in a well. We know we want something around 1.5 horsepower with uh, 12 gallons per minute and uh, uh, I can wait to start actually covering the trench and uh, do the the hole inside in a casing for the pitless uh, connector and uh, start installing the hydrants but unfortunately I don't have the tool to to work with the pipe that we have and I'm gonna have to go and uh, purchase it So I need a, a weight to put the thread inside in the other one and I use a bolt. So that was the only thing that I find it. And uh, it's an easy, easy job. I just pull the one that we have. We have a 500 feet of this. The conduit will be 316 total, probably 320 when it's all done but uh, for the moment i'm gonna install around uh, probably 300 and when i'm gonna be done with the rest i'm gonna install the remaining i know i'm gonna have a hard time to pull the wire to the pipe because it's not very big it's only one inch pipe but i think i can get away with there are only four wires going in and what I do, I'm going to put this wire and I think I'm going to just use the car to pull all the wires slowly, slowly. But we're going to see how that's going to work. And uh, like you already guessed, I don't have the tools for everything, but I improvise and probably I'm like a redneck. So I like it. Save money. This is the, the glue that I'm using, it's for the conduit, it's a grey color but you can use even the, the blue one. Just don't use the, the cleaner because you don't really need it, there's no pressure in this, it's just to protect the electric wire. There's no water, no nothing. And if you see it, I'm not going over because I don't want the, the glue to connect with the plastic rope that I use it to pull the wires. Even if you connect them one next to it, force it, it will be hard to actually pull it back. You can try it and you're gonna see it and when it's gonna be buried in the ground will not really move. So I think even without the glue, you can get away without using any glue, just connect them together. And that will be enough. And that's it. I don't even care about looking great or wiping the extra. It's gonna go in the ground and nobody's gonna see it, so nobody cares. So uh, the professionals are not doing what I'm doing with this this one. They just put a pipe in and then they're gonna put a, they call it a butterfly on one uh, one uh, end and they're gonna blow it and it's gonna go all the way back to the other end. But because it's so long, I'm not gonna risk it. So I better take my time and do it every 10, uh, 10 feet section 
and be sure that it's inside and actually putting this one in the ground and then discovering I cannot do it because it's not enough force on the butterfly it's not enough uh, uh, blow that actually can go all the way up to the other, other side and I'm, I'm not gonna try it so I'm gonna do this way and uh, it's the same result just takes a little bit longer now I have to apologize because my voice sounds weird it's happened because my husband and I, we are sick with that special bug that's happening lately around. We last an entire week of work. So on both ends I cover it with uh, Gorilla tape or any type of tape, gray tape, whatever you have. I don't want to have any dirt inside in the pipe because it would be extremely hard to pull the wires. So when we're going to pull the wire, I'm going to use a type of foam to lubricate the wire. That way it will actually go easier on the pipe because it's a long pipe. The conduit is like 300 and so feet. So it's going to be extremely hard to, to pull the wire. The Conduit goes down in the ground and after this Michael covered the trench leaving only the well and the two future water hydrants exposed to be worked on but this is going to be on a different episode. That's it. Now what I have to do, I have to go inside in a ditch, arrange the conduit in a proper way, no rocks around. I have to start shoveling uh, the dirt on top of it, of the conduit, avoiding any big rocks. And then I can actually use the mini excavator to put all the dirt back. But I'm going to have to use a tape. I have a, a metallic tape uh, for uh, uh, putting inside in a ditch above uh, the, the conduit and that way if I'm gonna have to dig or anybody have to dig they're gonna find first the, the tape and then they will know that uh, less than a feet away it's the conduit the water pipe is in the ground the conduit is in the ground and my husband started to cover up the trench. We're okay? Yeah. Now, let's talk about why we are having the well so far from the house. When searching for the land, we aimed for a property without covenants, but we couldn't find a property to like and compromise on some Department of Environmental Quality approvals that were difficult to change and already on the property. This initially saved us time and money, but also created challenges because we could not change the sites for the well and for the septic. Altering the DEQ plans would have been costly and time-consuming with no guarantee of approval. Well, we've done it anyway, and now we are moving on. Thanks for joining us on this journey. Stay tuned for more updates on our well installation in the future and see you soon. Please don't forget to share and subscribe to help our channel.